And I want to thank you for participating in the fourth annual Grassroots uh, Progressive Festival. It's important for the progressives to get together um, and to uh, get new things to think about, to find out new information, and to keep fighting. So thank you. We're going to have uh, questions for the candidates. They're going to have a time to each talk um, a little bit uh, to tell you about themselves and the things that they believe in. Because if you think about it, if you close your eyes, in a few months, we're going to have a new governor. And that new governor may be one of the people who is sitting in this room. Let's get started with uh, Peter Barca is Skyped in to us here and he wants to, to talk with you. Let me tell you that he was born in Kenosha and lived his whole life there. Um, he has an MA in Public Administration from the UW-Madison. He's been a special ed teacher. Um, he has represented the U.S. in the House of Representatives and been an administrator of the Small Business Administration. He's currently the majority leader, and he's married and has two children, and I will turn it over to Peter Barca. Well, thank you all so much, and I want to thank the uh, organizers of this effort to bring grassroots leaders from throughout the state. Uh, I so appreciate the opportunity to address you all because of my abiding respect for each and every one of you, fellow Badgers, fellow activists, champions really for true justice in the Wisconsin way. And that's why it's important why I'm so glad to have the opportunity to share some ideas with you today. I am out in New York City with my son who's a student out here. We had made this uh, agreement uh, right after Christmas when he came back out to New York. So I apologize, I can't be with you all. But as you know, this past year, there's been so little effort, uh, so little time for virtually anything except for uh, spending each and every day together battling this extreme right-wing agenda, uh, this attack on Wisconsin values and the great heritage of our state. Uh, but I do have some ideas I want to share with all of you. Uh, they're ideas that uh, obviously uh, the Republican leaders in the Capitol don't really appreciate, but I know all of you will. Um, it's alternatives to what we see happening in Wisconsin today. Um, first of all, I want to say that this Wisconsin protest movement, which began about a year ago and ran through the spring in the Capitol before it spread out like wildfire throughout the state, is something that was an incredible effort. And when the final story is written, I believe it will go down as one of the most incredible organizational efforts, one of the most peaceful expressions of dissent, and one of the most effective means of bringing together a proud community of people bound together by a meritorious tradition, a place we call Wisconsin. All of you are in a Thank you. All of you are such an amazing part of pulling to get this together, sustaining it, perpetuating it. Uh, through this day, surely in the months ahead, and hopefully in the years ahead. Uh, from the time when they ended that Joint Finance Committee hearing, you kept it going around the clock, 24 hours a day for day after day. And in so doing, you captured the public's attention and you captivated the imagination of our state. And I'm so proud to have stood with all of you to be one of the many in the front lines of that battle day after day. So many of you who uh, I knew only through your impressive reputation, I now know by name. Many of you I know by your voices when I hear you at the Capitol. Some of you I know by the way you bunked up on the marble floors of the Capitol. It was an amazing effort to come together as a state, to come together as people that believe in Wisconsin values, that want to restore our incredible heritage. And for today, there's three things that I want to share that I think must happen uh, in this campaign, which we have ahead. First of all, as Jesse Jackson used to say uh, during his uh, campaign for president not that many years ago, keep our eye on the prize. It is so important that we keep focused 
and that we not allow the small differences uh, which can sometimes divide us and not to diminish those differences because they can be very significant in many ways but just by the comparison to the extreme policies seemingly from the depths of hell that the Walkerites have brought forward when you look up through the smoke of obfuscation that they've had and the scorched earth policies that they've employed on our state it's hard to see sometimes significant differences by comparison and while one candidate or another may have a slightly different idea for health care or economic development transportation policy education all of us in this room believe in things like badger care um, trying to build upon badger care, not throw people off of it, promoting green energy jobs, not to use rules to block it, advancing quality education and not to diminish it. And we have to have our own kind of covenant, I believe, amongst all of the candidates that are running, that we not fall prey to what Republicans have done in this presidential campaign of attack ads and, and taking away from really the focus that ultimately we're going to have to have on defeating this governor, which has so harmed the state of Wisconsin. To me, it's so vital in any election effort where you have an incumbent that you keep the focus where it belongs, but even more so in a recall effort where you're trying to remove somebody from office because they've lost the confidence of the state and because in this case of the actual harm that they've brought upon our state. So it's very important we keep that focus. However, I want to add the fact that we also have to bring forward bold ideas to try and solve the problems of our state that people can rally around. And it's largely because of your work, because of the network of people we built throughout the state, that we have the opportunity, which we haven't had for a while, to usher in a new progressive era here in Wisconsin. When we win, it's very important that we bring forward ideas that we've been trying to push forward this session that have fallen on deaf ears, like green energy jobs priorities, like taking federal funds to improve health care, expand interconnectivity, and yes, develop public transportation systems and not send it back to be redistributed amongst other states. That we use the research and innovation at our university to build new research parks, build new businesses, and that we utilize our technical colleges to develop world-class technology and world-class workforces and not cut it by a third as this governor has done. We need smart, strategic, bold solutions that will be sustainable for the next hundred years. And that has to be our focus. Finally, the third point I guess I would make is that I believe that this campaign that we'll all be part of, regardless of who the nominee will be, has to be about values, about Wisconsin values. It has to be about the values of believing in rights. Rights, whether it be collective bargaining, quality education, women's health programs, having a pristine environment in this state. But most important, about our ability to be able to voice our opinions, have it count, and have it incorporated in the policies that govern this state. We need an agenda that is fitting of our proud heritage, one that will help to foster new ideas and build a prosperous future for Wisconsin. So thank you all for being here today, and uh, I appreciate the opportunity. This is a question that we'd like all the candidates to answer. The Wisconsin Grassroots Network is committed to organizing and empowering participatory grassroots groups throughout the state. How do you envision relating to these entities, both as a candidate and as a prospective governor? Well, first let me say how unfortunate it's been this session. As public hearings have been brought together, how often um, those opinions have fallen on deaf ears. And we've all seen just this past week so many of the shameful things that have come forward, such as developing agendas uh, in private law firms, uh, the speakers, key staff people working out of the offices of a law firm that taxpayers are already paying $395 an hour for. Um, but most important, or worst of all, I guess, 
is that when people came forward on things like reapportionment, when people have come forward, sometimes driving five and six hours to talk about collective bargaining, talk about things like now mining, that their voices have fallen on deaf ears. And it's very important in my judgment that we incorporate the ideas of all our citizens. And that the governors especially have the incredible ability to form task forces, to, to sit down with people, much like we're doing today in this room, to collect ideas. And, and that's what's needed. That's the Wisconsin way, as we roll up our sleeves, we work together, we bring forward our imagination of all of our citizens to develop policy. And that's exactly what I believe that we need to do and we must do. Um, once Governor Walker becomes the third governor in the nation to be removed from office through a recall. Thank you very much. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for joining us today. Oh, thank you all so much. Have a great day. Okay, I would like to introduce uh, um, someone who was born in Milwaukee and grew up in Waukesha County, but lives in Madison. Somebody with a BA in philosophy from Stanford Law, uh, and a Stanford Law degree from the University of Wisconsin Law School, who graduated from the Harvard University's Senior Executives in State and Local Government Program, is married to a state former representative, has a son, and is the former Dane County Executive, Kathleen Falk. To all of you, thanks for grassroots democracy. We did it a million strong. They said we couldn't, we did it. Way to go. I am so happy to be here. I started the morning in Viroqua, which is maybe the only place as pretty as right here. Uh, I have been working so hard this whole last year, like all of you, going from one corner of the state to the other, and I knew we'd get those signatures. I knew we would get more than 750,000. I, I thought we'd get a million, and we did because people all across the state, not just us right here, but I'm sure proud that Dane County is right here, uh, know that we can do better, that we can have better. You know, we've got a governor here now whose failed policies have failed just the most simple things that we in Wisconsin treasure and value. We don't ask for much. I'm the granddaughter of a bus driver from Milwaukee. We want Decent education for our kids, clean air and water, health care when we need it, and good paying job. That's not asking too much. And Scott Walker has failed us on every one of those Wisconsin values, and instead he's delivering an agenda for the far right National Tea Party that isn't us. And that's why I know we will beat him, because he is not fighting for us. Now, heard all across the state over this last year are the following. One, he's too divisive. At a time when we've got challenges in our state, we need leadership who will bring us together, get the job done, get people talking, solve problems. Instead, it's under the Walker way, it's his way or no way. Yeah, don't solve problems that way. Oh, the next thing I hear is, he makes the wrong choices. So what did he do last spring? Uh, in his budget bill as he started out, and uh, his legislation that he and his Republican allies rammed through, big tax breaks for a handful, and then the largest cuts in education in our state's history. Wrong choices. Big tax breaks for a handful, and then wanting to throw 65,000 people off their health care. Big tax breaks for a few, and rolling back our environmental laws that are just so basic to us in just this last week. Look at the shenanigans and what a length they will go to to roll back our most basic environmental laws. And he promised us last spring, Scott Walker, that if we stuck with his far right extreme agenda that isn't ours, that we'd be better off now for it. Well, here we are. Is anybody here better off for it? So 14 months later, we now see, sadly, that his failed policies haven't worked. Not only are we divided in family members against family members when we should be united in solving our problems, but Wisconsin has lost now jobs six months straight in a row. 
We are the only state in the nation with that terrible a record. In contrast to the national economy, which is finally coming back, not here. His policies haven't worked. We can do better. We know we can do better. We have been better, and I want us to do better. I've spent my lifetime making government do better for us. You know me as uh, the county executive, but let me take you back a few years earlier than that, even though I'm so young. <laughs> I started out in Milwaukee, German and Irish. Being frugal comes natural. And it's important in these time and days and age about caring for each other, that we respect that instead of what Walker's done, which is delivering an agenda for Texas billionaires and Missouri millionaires and Florida millionaires and New York millionaires. He's running for governor, but it isn't Wisconsin. <laughs> Well, then I grew up in Waukesha County, rural Waukesha County, much like right here. I'm home in the land, and that's why I love the land and water, and I hunt and fish. I have a passion for the outdoors. And when I was eight years old, and this was in 1959, I'm sorry to admit, when I was eight years old, I started a conservation club. Most kids, let alone girls, didn't do that back then. But that's what I did. And so it's no surprise that when I became of age and figured out my place on the earth, it was Watergate and the Vietnam War and Earth Day and civil rights and women's rights and our country was exploding. And I knew I wanted to change my country and my state that I loved and wanted it to make better decisions. So I went to law school to get those tools and then I started out working for Wisconsin's Environmental Decade making $35 a week and suing big and powerful interest in winning in the Supreme Court. Helping citizens. And I spent the next 20 years helping citizens all across the state protect their corners of the world, taking on big and powerful interests. And you remember, as a reward for that, Governor Tommy Thompson, I got in his way a little few too many times. And what did he do? <laughs> Abolished the public intervener office. Right. And that's when wonderful citizens in Dane County, like many of you here, said, Falk, run for county executive. We've got 2,500 farms and a whole lot of lakes and streams to protect. Go for it. And in my private life, as, as Barbara described, I'm the mom of this now 31-year-old son, and he and I, like Barbara cares a lot about, kids who don't have anything. I was involved in the lives of a lot of kids who had nothing. And I grew so, grew so frustrated by my inability to do make a difference in their lives, like those two friends have done of mine. And making a difference in countless kids' lives, I said, I gotta do something bigger and better because I'm so frustrated. And so I ran for county executive. And you elected me over and over and over a historic number of years. And during that time, despite the politics around us, I worked every day to balance the budget because that's important. I've done it for 14 years, far longer than Scott Walker. <laughs> and I might add more successfully. He had a deficit. <laughs> I delivered a progressive agenda, taking on big and powerful institutions like working on land use and preventing sprawl and protecting our farms and lakes. Like reforming our criminal justice system. And it wasn't easy because I worked with several Republican sheriffs and several Republican DAs and it wasn't until we got a Democratic D sheriff there, Dave Mahoney, that it got easier. But, but I, re I did that reform, so despite the fact we have 100,000 more people in Dane County under those 14 years. We have as low a jail population today as 14 years ago because we did it. We reformed the criminal justice system. I love taking on the big and powerful. And when I saw the number of kids, even in a county like ours where there are so many people passionate about protecting kids and families, we created programs that are unique or the only in the entire state for seniors, for kids, for after school programs, for helping moms and dads get jobs and keep jobs. And I am so motivated and proud and anxious to do that as your next governor. Now, I want to follow the rules, so I have one more minute. And that is, we've got nine weeks. Thanks to Judge Neese, who did his job and said, Walker, he said, Walker, I've already given you an extension. No more. This election to replace him should be in about nine weeks. 
that is not far. We've got to be organized. We've got to be disciplined. We've got to be out there like you are here and now. And I have been out there for the whole last year. I am ready to go. I am eager. I am passionate. I put together the best campaign team. Megan Mahaffey is my campaign manager. She ran United Wisconsin. Scott Ross is my communications director. He was left one Wisconsin to do that for me. I am proud of it. With your union support, women's support from Emily's list the other day. We got to put the big tent together. We have only nine weeks to do it. And I'm here asking for your support. And I'm ready to do the job day one. And I can't wait to go to work for you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Kevin. Okay, the next person we're going to hear from is running as an independent candidate. His name is Harry Trivedi. Hope I'm saying your name right. Um, he's a physician who specializes in kidney disease. I would say nephrologist, but I don't know what you think. Um, he's married to an, a doctor and has three teenagers. He's currently a professor of medicine at the Medical College of Wisconsin in Milwaukee, and I'd like you to welcome him. Well, it's a pleasure to be here. And I can't thank the organizers enough to give me this opportunity. So a, a question which I get asked all the time recently, and the media has been asking me, so what made you do this? What made you run? And my response is that I just got tired of the partisanship, the bickering, the lack of ideas, the lack of vision, and really a lack of leadership. And I thought I just had to do this. So here I am, and I just I'm just enjoying this moment, and I'm enjoying this experience, and I'm enjoying meeting all of you. We need to change things here in Wisconsin. We need to change things here drastically. We need to rejuvenate the economy. And I strongly believe we will not be able to do that unless we attract external capital. We have to attract external investments. We need to promote agriculture. We are in the prime Midwest location, surrounded by highly productive neighbors, but still we are at the bottom rung of product in agricultural productivity. We need to promote Wisconsin tourism. We, you, you see ads about Michigan.org, the state of Florida, but the state of Wisconsin has done nothing to flaunt the summertime beauty of Lower County and our beautiful areas of Northern Wisconsin. We need to promote education, not cut funds towards education. That's a false economy. It might seem good in the short term to save a few dollars, but like President Obama says, people that out-educate us will out-compete us. <laughs> You know, the highest number of scientific articles used to, be, used to be from the United States. Now guess where they are from? China. That's where we are. And unless we do something quickly and we do it decisively, we will keep deteriorating. So this is really a not the right time to cut education. It's in fact to enhance education. It's, you know, the employers, business leader, even the Federal Reserve has said that their employers have trouble finding skilled workers. You've got a national 8.5% unemployment rate, and it, it's just, it just blows my mind that employers are not finding workers. What tells us that we need to provide people the tools to uh, compete. And therefore, again, cutting education is absolutely the wrong thing to do. We need active fiscal management, not like when the crisis occurred in 2008, everyone just waited for everything to fall apart, and then all every, uh, people could do is sign furlough notices and pink slips. We have to be proactive. We need to have a plan. We need to see what the global perspective is and constantly act proactively, not retroactively. We should actively, I, I intend to actively have public participation. It's not about the, the becoming a governor. It's not the end. It's just the beginning. We need to constantly engage people and in, in important issues, even, you know, the, this is the electronic media. It's very easy to take uh, 
even non-binding, you know, not a referendum every time, but a non-binding public poll as to what people think. And we need to raise the level of morality. I mean, this whole, the way, besides the wrongness of this taking away the collective bargaining rights, because I think that's extreme, the way it was done was absolutely incorrect. It's just, you know, even the idea of putting troublemakers into the crowd of demonstrators, even the idea of that holding the threat of severing, you know, jobs of state employees. I mean, that's just, just wrong. And we should say here in Wisconsin, use the power of our voice that we will not tolerate dirty politics in Wisconsin. Yes. And you know, I, I mean, it's not about being a governor. I mean, it, it, I don't have to be a governor. I mean, yes, it's a title, you know, it's a power, but I have a full satisfied professional life. But I want to make a difference. I want to energize Wisconsinites. I want to invigorate the state of affairs. The becoming the governor is not the end, it's just the beginning. And I'll need all of your support, and I'll, I'll greatly appreciate and will be honored by your support. was born in Aurora, Illinois, and represents District 31 in the State Senate, and has been doing so since 2007. She's an organic farmer from Alma, and also has a PhD in Health Services Research from St. Louis University. She's a former administrator at the University of Illinois, and a member of the Fab 14. She's married with one son, Kathleen Bynum. One year ago, last night, I and my colleagues were sitting in a Culver's in Freeport, Illinois at 10.30 at night, and we didn't know where we were going to sleep. And my sister was with me, and she said, why don't you come and sleep at my house? And so began the odyssey of the Wisconsin 14. And my sister is here today, and those of you have been all about all the Wisconsin 14 that didn't show up with their underwear or their medicine. <laughs> Her husband went to the store and bought about four different sizes of t-shirts and they couldn't figure out why. <laughs> I got a call one year ago yesterday morning at six o'clock in the morning. Senator Miller called me and he knows I used to be a dairy farmer and he gets up, he knew I got up early so he called me first and he said, Kathleen, don't go to the Capitol, because if you go to the Capitol, you're going to be followed by a state patrol officer, and your options are going to be very limited. He was right. <laughs> we, didn't go to this, we didn't go to the Capitol. Instead, we went to the Democratic headquarters, and, and then three hours later, I was headed for the Illinois border, intent on making that border before the gavel fell, opening that Senate session on the morning of the 17th of February. And when I drove south, all I could, uh, uh, the overwhelming feeling I had was a feeling of freedom. I had been prepared to go to the, to the floor to, to debate the bill, to amend the bill, to delay the bill. But in the end, I knew that they had the votes and there was nothing that we could do to stop it if we went to the floor to vote on it. But we had the power to stop the process. Now the Senate, the, the Wisconsin Senate doesn't have a filibuster like the, um, like the United States Senate does, but we did have a provision in the Constitution that gave us the ability to stop the process. And over and again, and even this past week, I think that a lot of people in Wisconsin still don't understand why we did what we did, especially in my neighborhood, Western Wisconsin, where the news from Madison doesn't make it out because we think the capital is vaguely in St. Paul. <laughs> And you know all about Act 10 and what was in Act 10, not only the crushing of workers' rights, but the selling off of state assets and no-bid contracts, and the page after page after page I read of changes in the Medicaid law that allowed an unelected official to make all these decisions about our health programs. 
all, all of the changes in the civil service system that Bob LaFollette had put in place in 1905, he was dismantling the civil service system. So the bill was very, very bad. But by, but by leaving the state, we gave people time to understand what was in that bill, time to communicate, time to organize, and time for the people of the state to claim their own power. And we helped people connect the dots. And when they connected the dots, they were outraged by that, that picture that emerged. And when, when I think about what happened, what, what we did was we explained to the nation what was happening. We, all of us in Wisconsin, and the nation responded with a national movement. And it, it did not end after we, get, after we came back home to consolidate their power the Republicans went to pass a change in the voting law. And many of you were in the gallery that day when we passed that voting law, and you will remember what happened. You remember the gallery, the Senate gallery, how it's yeah. you know, covered by three sides. And all of the people that came to the gallery that day were black. Many people were, he were here. And when Senator Risser, the longest serving state legislator, stood up to speak, he was gaveled down by the president and told he could not speak. And they gaveled the session to a close and wouldn't even let the Democrats finish voting. And we stood up and we said, you can't change the rules, you can't change the rules. But they did change the rules. And the people who were all dressed in black, who had been silent through the whole process, they got up and they shouted, shame, shame, shame. voting rights. And then everyone joined hands and sang, including some of the senators, including some high Spencer Cox and other senators, on the Senate floor and were saying, we shall overcome. And they filmed everything and put it on YouTube so the people in my district could actually find out what was happening in Madison. Because of course, Wisconsin and I turned off the camera. I, I believe that the people took back our state in those moments after we left the state. We gave the people the opportunity to do that, but they responded, and had they not responded, what would have happened would have been what happened in Illinois. I mean, in, in Indiana, when the Indiana representatives came to Illinois and no protesters showed up and nothing changed in Indiana. It, everything had to work together, and it did. And that's exactly why we had such a huge reaction from all over the state when a million people signed the recall petitions to give Governor Walker his pink slip. Yeah. Something is happening across this great state, and I think it, it is typified by the reaction of the people who were the legendary box carriers. Are there any legendary box carriers here? Raise your proud hands. Let's give these people a round of applause. The legendary box carriers carried those boxes up the, up, up the stairs, from the U-Haul up the stairs to the Government Accountability Board. And Sheila, who's from Black River Falls and couldn't be here today because she was sick, but she gave absolutely emotional, with tears in her eyes, story of what it was like to be the legendary box carrier. And she said, when I first picked up the box, it was very, very heavy. And in the box, I felt the pain of losing a job. I felt the heartbreak of a home in foreclosure. I felt the fear of a parent who was worried that their son or daughter was gonna lose health care. And she said, I carried that box, and I saw the people, and I heard the cheers, and I felt inside the box was the hope of the people. It was the determination of the people. It was the respect of the people all over the state. It was the courage of those people who felt like they might lose their job. And she said, when I got up those stairs to the top of the stairs at the GAB, my box was as light as a feather. <laughs> right now, Wisconsin needs a fresh start. We need a new beginning in government and politics. 
We need to heal the divisions among us and respect each other as we debate our differences. We need to stop pitting business against labor and stop pitting the public sector against the private sector. We are all suffering and we are all in this together. And we need everyone together, their best efforts to make our communities the kind of great places to live and work and raise a family. We are only going to move forward if we move forward together. We need a fresh start. We need a new beginning. We need a governor who's going to be truthful about her intentions. We need a governor who is going to practice. <laughs> we need a governor who's going to practice self-restraint. We need a governor who's going to respect Wisconsin's traditions of good government that we spent the whole day talking about today. The, of good government, of openness, of full participation, of following the rules like Representative Barkett learned they didn't do. We need a governor who's going to bring us together, and I pledge to be that kind of governor. <laughs> now, I'm often asked by people, what can we do, Kathleen? Can you please make your colleagues get along a little bit better? <laughs> and I say to them, I can't change anyone but myself. But I live my life by the saying of Gandhi, be the change you want to see. So I have a challenge to you today. If you don't like money in politics, don't vote for the politician with the most money. <laughs> and if you don't like sound bites, vote for the politician that respects your intelligence. negative campaigning, vote for the politician that talks solutions, not trash. <laughs> and if you don't like politics as usual, vote for the unusual politician. <laughs> Thank you very much.